the next thing I want to talk about is indirect addressing so in this training program right here we have the a movement to position one at this speed fine but let's say we need to, we wanted to change some of this stuff up more than likely it would be this curve right here that we need to adjust we're not quite sure if it's going to be too much curve or too low curve and while we're running in auto we might need to change that so oops. what we're going to do is we're going to say register right there we're going to say this is register 5 we'll control the continuous value now so when it moves to this position here it's going to first grab that register value and use that as its CMT value you can also do this with the speed we can say this is register 4 register 4 oh, 4 and register 4 so if in this section of the code we needed the robot to go a certain speed but this could uh, be changed by the user then this would be a good way to do it one thing you could also do is in the main program you can have a section of code where the user is supposed to set these registers up and then all this code right here never has to be adjusted an example of this is if we had this program right here actually let's use that one we were well, we'll use this we will delete all this real quick we're going to add a remark saying speed at corner All right. and right there the register 4 is equal to a value which for default we'll set to 2000 now we're going to actually go here and label these registers real quick before we get too far into this so speed at corner Here we're going to say CMT at corner. Now this corner might be as the robot's going into a press to pick up a part, or as it's going around a certain object. Whatever you need. Um, remember, we're only dealing with snippets of code right now, just so you get the concept for this. At a later time, I might write a full program for this and we can go through it bit by bit. So right here, to finish this up, I'm going to also add just a little extra space. And I'm going to copy that, paste the logic. And right here, we're going to, have to get rid of that, we're going to change this to CMT at corner now uh, for our remark here and oh, we also have to change that for our remark here and the register they actually have the same name in this case it's yeah, a short enough description that we don't really need to do much more but if we needed to we would have the option of changing this up to say set the speed at the corner you could give a more detailed description than the register or maybe uh, depending on what you're trying to describe you might have to use abbreviations for the register so this uh, remark right here just allows for a lot better understanding uh, for the user makes it a lot easier for them to follow this I'm going to keep it the same though for now so then we would call program train and it would use this 
Now I'm going to set up a simulation right now so that we can watch this uh, run right here. Okay, so I've set up this simulation. Now I've set register 4 for the speed of the uh, corner to be 1000 millimeters per second and R5, the CNT of the corner, to be 0 to start. Now we're just going to keep running that program over and over. Now when we start the program it's going to move in our traditional triangle right here. Now it's going to keep doing this over and over. If we change those registers in that program it will either increase its speed or its continuous value for those are the two ones we've uh, allowed for right there. But one of the very useful aspects of indirect addressing is it allows you to change some things while you're running or through some calculations in a program. So let's say we wanted to see the CNT of 50. It's going to have to do it on the next uh, round because it was already moving towards that point. But now it's going to use a CNT of 50 and it's going to curve away from that corner a little bit, as you can see right there. And if we change the CNT value to 100, curves a little more. So you can experiment with this. Let's say you had some object right there and you wanted to make sure that the robot did not hit it. Okay, we can also try increasing the speed. Let's go 1,000 to 50. It's going to take effect next run. But it is actually taking effect for all the motions right now because that's how we are declaring all of the speed here. So it cut the corner a little more. I'm going to zoom into this since this corner is all we really care about. And now we're going to do 1,500. Probably going to have to do it on the next round. Right there, we have a little more. So we'll go to 2,000. And we have even more. So you can see all that affected the curvature right there. So once we've fully fleshed this out and we've tested this, we found the values that work the best. It is best to actually put them in as the direct value in here. Indirect addressing is very useful, but some program options have issues with it. Um, I'll be going over some other program options a little later. But if you know what the perfect value is for this, you might as well just set it permanently instead of using indirect registers. Because that makes it a lot harder for anyone to change it while it's running or just mess it up in general. It's just going to be set there permanently. So that's how indirect addressing works and how you can change registers while you are moving. One last thing I'd like to mention is that if we adjust one of these registers to a value that is outside the limits, we're going to actually zoom out so we can catch the robot wherever it is. If we put this at 101, which is outside the CNT values, the robot will fault out. So this is important to know when you do this. Now you could have some sort of program check these values before they're used if you want to do that, but for the most part it should be common sense as to the values you use as long as someone is basically familiar with the robots. So if we set that back to 100, sorry to reset, and go forward, don't know if it'll, uh, there we go, and the robot will continue.